week, I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Adam Hills and Ed Byrne, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Prime Minister with two of his cabinet colleagues. But what does CAFS stand for? Is it uh, George Osborne's middle names, Crepuscular Addendum Fandango Sousaphone? <laughs> <laughs> Is it couldn't arrange a fondle in a strip club? <laughs> Cocky, aristocratic, foppish, and smug. <laughs> Could it be Charlie's Angels, the failed sequel? <laughs> is it cruising area for sex? <laughs> is, is it in fact, no. from left to right, clueless, albino face, <laughs> slap it? <laughs> I, that's just abuse, by the way, you're applauding there. Uh, not actual satire, that is just being rude about it. Uh, <laughs> is uh, Cameron simply saying, Crikey, a fox, splendid. <laughs> it's written all over the toilets here. Is it Chris Addison, Fancy Stewart? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going to move, to, move towards it, the correct answer, please. Okay, is it Cameron, Cameron apologises for sexism? Yes, it is. Well done, thank you very much. Too. Uh, Yes, the answer I was looking for is Cameron apologises for sexism. This is the news that Prime Minister David Cameron has apologised for a number of remarks he made in the House of Commons that were interpreted as being sexist. Speaking on the eve of the Conservative Party conference, he said he screwed up over his comments and must do better. The apology seems a way for Cameron to attempt to woo back female voters. Now, do we know what the, uh, what the instance were? Yes, yeah. what, what he did was he said apparently to one of the MPs in the House, he said, calm down, dear. Yes. Now, that is a sad thing when you've got to basically impersonate Michael Winner. <laughs> Meanwhile, George Osborne's behind him going, all we need to do is stimulate the European meerkat. <laughs> <laughs> he said, he's, he's apologised for them, hasn't he? And he's actually said now to woo women voters that he doesn't regard women as beneath him. He doesn't want them to do uh, menial jobs like, you know, making tea, because he's got Nick Clegg to do that for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he apologised later in an interview with the Sunday Times, was, uh, by claiming that, and these are exact words, I'm not that kind of, I'm not sort of one of the lads, actually, you know, most of my, I mean, one of my best friends. When I go out, it's like, no, I'm not explaining this properly. <laughs> Even the fact that one of his best friends may have been a woman until he actually totted it up his head and went, no, I can't back that up. Uh, As the closest thing to a woman on this panel. <laughs> Chris, is what Cameron said offensive? <laughs> and it's, yeah. Speaking for the sisterhood. Cameron talked about his problems with women to Andrew Marr. Now there is a man, yes. <laughs> a man who took out a super injunction to try and prevent people talking about the fact he was having a fling with a journalist. And you're thinking, if you're going to have an affair, don't have it with somebody who writes for a living. <laughs> have it with Wayne Rooney. He is not. <laughs> You think Rooney has days when he's got to write down his own name, he has to check the back of his shirt, <laughs> and even then he writes down ten. <laughs> you know, there, was another, there was another comment that he made to the uh, MP Peter Bone, who has apparently attempted to ask questions referring to his wife, um, and saying, oh, well, this was certainly making Mrs Bone, you know, and, with, and, and he would use her as uh, every woman, I think, in the questions. But he referred to it once uh, after he asked some questions, says, Cameron said, I do feel now that a very big part of my life is trying to give pleasure to Mrs Bone. <laughs> I feel on this occasion I can only go so far. <laughs> I think Mr Bone has a point. <laughs> I tried to look this up, so I googled Peter Bone's wife, and I didn't get anything done for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like a child's pornography book. Yeah. <laughs> see, uh, see Peter's wife. Peter Bone's wife. <laughs> he also said, there's a quote from Cameron, I'm aware women are not as supportive of the coalition as others. Now, who are these others? Who are these men? <laughs> he can't even be bothered to call us people, can he? <laughs> <laughs> now, moving on, what did Cameron say in all these interviews that the British were very good at? Inventing. Inventing, Inventing. yes. Yeah. Uh, a quote, an actual quote from us, we invented the jet engine, DNA, the worldwide <laughs> jet. And you know, I don't know what we used to do before you invented DNA here. <laughs> what he doesn't realise is in Australia the DNA spirals the opposite direction. <laughs> Don't you just refer to it as and? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's also a 
worth remembering you can invent something and not be good at it. Do you know what I mean? Like Britain also invented rugby and cricket. Yes. <laughs> Did win the last two ashes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Please, please. We are not going to have any of that childish name calling from the Australian. Oh, if this was about the hurling, you'd be all over this shit. I, I was, the reason I was actually going to point out that I'd have been Australian, but you know what the hell. Uh, <laughs> but, I'd just like to mention that I was out there for the cricket uh, mm -hmm. over the winter, very enjoyable. And nothing better than hearing the Barmy Army sing to the Australian fans. Send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over you. <laughs> and follow it up with your next queen is Camilla Parker Bowles. <laughs> Camilla Parker Bowles. Camilla Parker Bowles. You very much brought that on yourself. <laughs> Who might George Osborne have offended with during his speech? Uh, Eric Pickles. Eric it? Pickles, yes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a great photograph of Eric Pickles, but he's beginning to find a great time. photograph of Eric Pickles. <laughs> but he's he's, he's so Dickensian. He's in, in every photo he feels more like, Good, good evening, Eric Pickles here. You should work on Christmas Day. Uh, you should be glad of it. Had some cold, that's all you're getting. Uh, <laughs> you expect him to lift up the hat and a little ham sandwich to fall out of the top. <laughs> It's odd, though. He's always referred to as Eric Pickles. He's never referred to as Mr. Pickles. And that is possibly because Mr. Pickles makes him sound like a cat. <laughs> Being one of those overweight cats that has to back itself into a corner to clean itself. <laughs> Moving on. Please, Carl. Oh. Uh, what is happening to the traditional police station? What was announced this week? Uh, it's closing. Well, no, they're well, not, they're not all closed. They're closing. Like there's one. There's yeah. one, there's yeah. one traditional police station, yeah. and we've decided to close it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was kind of as if they were getting rid of all the police. They're, they're getting rid of the public counter, the place you go to get your passport photograph signed, or whatever it is. And now you phone up, uh, mm -hmm. and you use the automated phone system. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, no, do I say, it's not like phoning like for cinema tickets. It's not like they're going to go, did you say London? Uh, <laughs> You're being stabbed. Press two. <laughs> did you say there was a bugler in your house? Uh, <laughs> No, not a bugler. If there is a bugler in your house, tell him to stop bugling. Uh, bugling loudly in a house after 11 o'clock is an offence, and you may be arrested by the police. All right, send them! Uh, the basic initiative with the police station is what they did with the post office and just put them in the ranks of W.H. Smith. The, the, the officer will say, thank you very much for reporting this murder, Mum. Uh, just before you go, would you like a massive dairy milk for a quid? <laughs> The grey area being what is an emergency, what is not an emergency. Um, are you going, ah, ah, emergency? Yeah. No, not emergency. Are, are you speaking really quietly because there's somebody in the house? Yeah. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm being attacked by the man from the Lurpak better. Yeah, that would be really weird as the guy from the Lurpak motor attack chat. I think I can hold him off as long as, until the heating kicks in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but what I can Goes, uh, is this a non emergency number? Yes, it said, uh, there's been a burglary in my house. Oh, why is this not an emergency? Ah, I shot him. So take it, huh? He's yeah. <laughs> not going anywhere. <laughs> okay, bring that round the point to Ed, Adam, and Andy. <laughs> now we play a round called Thinking Outside the Mox. <laughs> this <laughs> Involves Stuart, Ed, and Adam. So, if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch with Wheel of News, and whoever it chooses to stop one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. Okay, here we go. The first subject is kids. Who was coming in last? Last week. Ever sorted. Know about this now? Ah, yes, kid. Uh, I became a dad uh, uh, nine months ago. And uh, I haven't let it change my life completely. And that, well, the only thing I'm worried about, I don't want to be one of those people who prefaces a statement with the phrase, speaking as a parent. <laughs> speaking as a parent. Gather round, everyone. He's speaking as a parent now. <laughs> Wait, no, bring in the people from the other room. He's speaking as a parent. No, he was only speaking as an arsehole before. <laughs> and he's speaking as a parent. Yes, oh, sage one, speak. Tell us your wisdom. Impart your knowledge. Speaking as a parent. Doesn't that make you want to stab them as a maniac? <laughs> Because the thing is, you read the books. There's loads of books you can buy on uh, being a parent. That's why, uh, there's millions of books, in fact. That's why I get really annoyed when people use that excuse for, for, for their bad parenting. They always come, oh, well, you know, kids, they don't come with an instruction manual, do they? <laughs> no. 
you have to buy one. <laughs> They're like seven quid. <laughs> but with the books, one thing the books warned me about, it hasn't turned out to be a problem. Books warned me that, uh, that sometimes a man can become jealous of the affection the woman gives the child. Uh, I've not had, the only issue I've had in that direction is that when I burp, I get frowned at, and when he does it, he gets a round of applause. That's not fair. <laughs> and why is his wind so much more important and exciting than mine? My wife has spent anything up to an hour trying to get wind out of him. Will she pull my finger? No, she will not. <laughs> Thank you very much, Jack. Okay, let's spin the wheel again. The subject is travel. Who is going to ask? Adam. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to say something, and in particular because Stuart Francis is here, I love Canada. I love Canada. Because Canadians are normally the politest, quietest people on the planet. The first time I went to Canada, I went to uh, Toronto. And in Toronto, they had, at that point, the world's tallest tower, and they were half an hour from Niagara Falls. Not one person boasted about it. If I'd landed in an American city with the world's tallest tower, it would have been, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston, home of the world's tallest building! The only reason I knew it was in Canada was that I went to the hotel reception and went, oh, what should I do today? And the guy went, Oh, maybe check out the CN Tower. Oh, really? Why is that? Oh, no reason. <laughs> I just think you might like it. I got to the top, and it wasn't even a big thing. It was just a little plaque that went, CN Tower, world's tallest building. And I went back to him that night and went, it's, it's the world's tallest building. And he went, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I thought you might like it. <laughs> How do you feel about waterfalls? <laughs> The thing I love the most about Canada, though, is that they have Braille on their banknotes. I don't know if you know that. All Canadian money has Braille on it, so the blind people know how much money they're giving over at any given point in time. What an amazing country. They're bilingual, they have same-sex marriages, and they have Braille on their banknotes. Canada is the only place in the world in which two blind French lesbians can get married and pay for it in cash. <laughs> Okay, that leaves it, Stuart. Let's see what topic you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel. <laughs> it's romance. <laughs> that was terrific, by the way, Adam. Oh, thank you, Stuart. You're welcome. <laughs> Ladies in bed, I like to spoon. Anybody else do heroin? <laughs> Am I guilty of being romantic? You be the judge. A bottle of champagne on ice, the dulcet voice of Luther Vandross fills the air. A trail of rose petals lead to a bed on which I'm lying naked. <laughs> Bedroom door slowly opens and I whisper those three special words. Happy birthday, Dad. <laughs> When women see me naked, they say I look like a Greek god. From Aphrodite? What's he, uh... <laughs> I like my women the way I like my skis. Rented. <laughs> With a little wax on their bottom. I'm a very lucky man. I have an amazing wife who has given me three incredible blowjobs. <laughs> Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Adam, which category would you like? Uh, I would like home news, please. Okay, your category is home news, and the answer is ten. What is the question? Uh, is it how many times does Shane Warne have to say the sentence, no, really, I'm engaged to Liz Hurley, before people believe him? <laughs> we, we love that in Australia, by the way. The Shane Warne that is our favourite story of the year. You can keep the, the World Cup and the Ashes. <laughs> 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 you can keep Liz Hurley. <laughs> is it how many days are there in the Greek tax year? <laughs> Is it, is it in what year was Jesus 10? <laughs> <laughs> is it the um, age lover boy Dara first lost his hair? <laughs> what is a cruel name to give your child if your surname is Pin Bowling? <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it in fact how many words
words has Zara Phillips said to Mike Tyndall since touching down in New Zealand? <laughs> How many members of the House of Lords claimed for leaping duties on the 10th day of Christmas last year? <laughs> yeah. um, no. Uh, what is a cruel name to give your child if your surname is Snervous Headache? <laughs> Is it how many people will be on Bournemouth Beach next weekend? <laughs> is it the number of stolen donuts I can fit on my penis? <laughs> is it, it, why do you actually stole it? <laughs> you don't want to pay for all these things. Why should you invest in your penis donuts? Don't you all pay for your penis donuts? <laughs> what number sounds the most dramatic if you just say it three times? Ten, ten, ten! <laughs> <laughs> Can I have the correct answer, what please? force gale comes out of Eric Pickles on Curry Thursday? <laughs> <laughs> How many years before David Williams will get the taste of suey jams? <laughs> How many shredded wheat constitute a lethal overdose? <laughs> How, about the, How often do I have to ask you to give me the correct answer, please? <laughs> please, please, in the name of mercy. Uh, is it how much what? do they want to increase the speed yeah. limit by? It is I'm exactly motivated. that. Thank you very, very much, Ed Burr. That's very good. <laughs> yes, the question I was looking for, by how many miles per hour is the government looking to raise the motorway speed limit? This is the news that the government has announced proposals to raise the motorway speed limit from 70 miles per hour to 80 miles per hour by 2013. There will be a period of consultation later in the year, and then the first 80 miles per hour motorways <coughs> and large dual carriage rates could exist within two years. Regardless, even if it's 80 miles an hour, you'll still get people driving in the middle lane when there is nobody else around. And the reason is they think it's safer, don't they? It's not safer because everybody coming up behind them drives like an idiot. Some people try and overtake them on the inside. Some people come up behind them, start flashing them. I saw one bloke recently, right? He overtook on the outside, then he slowed down on the inside so as he could overtake on the outside again. He started doing a donut around them. <laughs> I think the idea is that they say that it'll help the economy. Because yeah. if there's more road deaths, that will lower unemployment. <laughs> and and how, long, how much quicker would you get to a 50-mile journey on average? Five minutes. Five minutes. And if people are going, I can get there five minutes faster. I think I'll stay in bed. Uh, <laughs> the, the real problem here is, for the environment, is that, you know, your wife comes home earlier, catches you with somebody else, burns all your stuff, and that releases a load of carbon emissions. <laughs> You, that's really, if, you, if, you're, if you're doing somebody else and you're not narrowing at least five minutes, yeah, between shutting them out the door and your wife arriving in, you're cutting it very fine there. I'm just saying, <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to schedule this far better than that. There's a terrifying feeling of knowledge coming up. <laughs> yeah. I can take knowledge about any kind of thing. Yeah. Dora Brian, agony uncle. Yeah. I don't want to live in a country with average speed cameras, though, do you? I hate average speed I want to live in a country that has really good speed cameras. <laughs> Which weather-related records were broken recently? This has been the hottest October since record breakers finished. <laughs> it was, like, it was every, but lots, of people, lots of people incredibly happy. Some people just sitting in the sun. Other people phoning up British Gas and going. Whenever there's a heat wave, I love you guys because you you just disrobe. I, I, know, I haven't seen that much skin since I was in a hot tub with Brian Blessed. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a, a, just a chance for, you know, the press to roll out their sleazy photographs again. It was, it was like, oh, this is an agency you're in going, we need sleazy <laughs> photographs fast. And where are the guys who do the A-level results? They've not been busy for a few weeks. <laughs> There's a photograph of one girl. I don't know, do we, uh, actually, we have it. Is it the fish and chips? Oh, yeah. The fish and chips. And you're kind of going, and you weren't going, it, it, it's the fish and chips you want. Oh, yeah, love, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the fish <laughs> You can just eat one. Eat yeah. it. Eat 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 my wife is coming, get rid of the chips and the tits. Uh, anyway, my favorite thing is when they, when they say, and it was hotter than Mexico. It was really randomly like we were in a battle with Mexico. Finally, finally Mexico. Stick that in your sombrero. Hotter than you. And there's somewhere in Guadalajara that the man going, oh no, we have to take down these signs. <laughs> It's time saying, this many days since it was hotter in Bournemouth. Uh, 
Pedro, Pedro, take down the sign there. Go on, we shall start again tomorrow. Uh, anyway, so I read in the, I read in the papers that Jersey, Jersey was boasting that it had been hotter than Hawaii. But, on the other hand, Hawaii didn't collaborate with the Nazis, so... <laughs> good for everyone because the Tesco said they sold three million extra burgers and 800,000 sausages so while we were enjoying it pigs and cows were looking up going oh shit <laughs> it made me realize why British people never plan barbecues because you never know ahead of time when it's actually gonna be nice weather because I was I was actually sitting in the hot weather going oh this is lovely we should have people over next weekend and my friends going it's only gonna last a day <laughs> and suddenly realized my British barbecues are so frantic it's like Terry the sun's out quick get to Tesco get some sausages get one of them little four barbecues we've only got a few minutes <laughs> barbecue start uh, <laughs> people have managed to turn it around into a complaint though haven't they because yeah. it's over it's over now, people go, well, it's over, isn't it? <laughs> it's over, now there's a hurricane, now it's all cold. But that's life, isn't it? Everything balances out, everything in life, yin and yang. For everything nice, you get something nasty. That's why fun fairs are run by the most threatening people you've ever met in your life. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point is to Chris Hewitt's show. Yeah. Yeah. OK, now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is unlikely instructions. <clears throat> Lose or not use this electrical appliance while you're in the bath. Actually, you know what? Go on. <laughs> if you're that dumb, I think we can afford to lose you. <laughs> Nick Clegg Feng Shui. Move everything to the right for an easier life. <laughs> Noodle. For best results, put back on the shelf. <laughs> if pain persists, see a doctor. Just make sure it's not Michael Jackson's doctor. <laughs> <laughs> to light gas, first place match near buttocks. <laughs> One of these condoms has got a hole in it. Are you feeling lucky, punk? <laughs> Dale Farm Yoghurt. Contents may settle. <laughs> Please retain these assembly instructions in case you want to disassemble the furniture when you realise moving in with her wasn't the best move after all. <laughs> instructions for sandwich toaster. Week one, eat nothing but toasted sandwiches. <laughs> Week two, put in cupboard and never use a yoghurt. unsure how to apply condom, take banana and beat erection with it till it goes away. <laughs> Enjoy your animal-shaped biscuits. Do not eat if seal is broken. <laughs> <laughs> to reboot, pick up boots and put them on again. <laughs> Congratulations on your new bread maker. Ooh, I bet King's Mill are quaking in their boots. <laughs> Game is over either when one player collects all cheeses or Daddy has a tantrum and kicks the board across the room. <laughs> are your hands full but you want to transfer ten donuts? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The next topic is unlikely things to hear in a restaurant. Let's skip the pudding. You look like you've had enough already. <laughs> wow, thanks for picking up the bill, Zara. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, we don't have snail porridge. No, this isn't owned by Heston Blumenthal. Mm. This is Heston Services. <laughs> How does crispy aromatic duck sound? Quack, quack. But that was before it was either crispy or aromatic. <laughs> Do I have a reservation? Well, I'm not sure about all these Polish people moving over here. <laughs> <laughs> Table for two, please. But no food. I'm a woodworm. traditional Greek restaurant, so don't worry if you can't pay. The German government will cover it. <laughs> uh, 
You'd like a Foster's? <laughs> Hang on, let's see if we've got any left. Barry, any Foster's left? Yeah, keg's nearly full, Jim. <laughs> Here's the tip. If you find the rest of the chef's penis, please let us know. <laughs> Have you been to a harvester before? I'm joking, no one comes twice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see the rugby players getting along with the dwarves. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an unusual taste, isn't it? What, what, what is in this death by chuck? <laughs> It's nice to see Zara and Mike getting along. <laughs> yes, it is all you can eat, Knight, and that's why you can't come in, Mr. Pickles. <laughs> oh, my God. There's a man's face in my soup and it looks just like me. <laughs> Excellent choice, sir. This lady is much fitter than your wife. <laughs> hmm? Rose for the lady. If you want to do something for the lady, why don't you fuck off? <laughs> <laughs> okay, then uh, the part gonna kiss you and show us. And back to the end of the show. This week's winners are Chris Allison, Hugh Lanson, Sure Francis. Andy Parsons, Adam Hills, and Ed Byrne. Thank you for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night. Tomorrow at 10, we're as snug as a bug on BBC Two with Stephen Fry's QI on insects and invertebrates. On BBC Three now, Robbie Savage is getting strictly arrest for a round of well, good golf with Lee Nelson. Quality... I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Adam Hills and Ed Byrne, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. <laughs> we start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Prime Minister with two of his Cabinet colleagues. But what does C-A-F-S stand for? Is it uh, George Osborne's middle names, Crepuscular Addendum Fandango Sousaphone? <laughs> Is he couldn't arrange a fondle in a strip club? <laughs> Cocky, aristocratic, foppish and smug. <laughs> Could it be Charlie's Angels, the failed sequel? <laughs> is it cruising area for sex? <laughs> is it in fact, no. from left to right, clueless? Albino face, <laughs> slap it. <laughs> nice. That's just abuse, by the way, you're applauding there. Uh, not actual satire, that is just being rude about it. Uh, <laughs> is uh, Cameron simply saying, Crikey, a fox, splendid. <laughs> it's written all over the toilets here. Is it Chris Addison, fancy Stewart? <laughs> I'm, just, okay, I, I'm gonna move, to, move it, towards the correct answer, please. Okay, is it Cameron? Cameron Apologises for sexism. Yes, it is. Well done. Thank you very much. Too. Very much. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for is Cameron apologises for sexism. This is the news that Prime Minister David Cameron has apologised for a number of remarks he made in the House of Commons that were interpreted as being sexist. Speaking on the eve of the Conservative Party conference, he said he screwed up over his comments and must do better. The apology seems a way for Cameron to attempt to woo back female voters. Now, do we know what the, uh, what the instances were? Yes, yeah. what, what he did was he said apparently to one of the MPs in the House, he said, calm down, dear. Yes. Now, that is a sad thing when you've got to basically impersonate Michael Winner. <laughs> Meanwhile, George Osborne's behind him going, all we need to do is stimulate the European meerkat. 
He said that he, he's, he's apologised for them, hasn't he? And he's actually said now to woo women voters that he doesn't regard women as beneath him. He doesn't want them to do uh, menial jobs like, you know, making tea, because he's got Nick Clegg to do that for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he apologised later in an interview with the Sunday Times was, uh, by claiming that, and these are exact words, I'm not that kind of, I'm not sort of one of the lads, actually, you know, most of my, I mean, one of my best friends. When I go out, it's like, no, I'm not explaining this properly. <laughs> Even the fact that one of his best friends may have been a woman until he actually totted it up his head and went, no, I can't back that up. Uh, As the closest thing to a woman on this panel, Chris, is what Cameron said offensive? Yeah. Speaking for the sisterhood, Cameron talked about his problems with women to Andrew Marr. Now, there is a man... Yes. <laughs> A man who took out a super injunction to try and prevent people talking about the fact he was having a fling with a journalist. And you're thinking, if you're going to have an affair, don't have it with somebody who writes for a living. <laughs> have it with Wayne Rooney. He is never going to write You think Rooney has days when he's got to write down his own name, he has to check the back of his shirt, <laughs> and even then he writes down ten. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There was, another, there was another comment that he made to the uh, MP Peter Bone, who has apparently attempted to ask questions referring to his wife um, and saying, oh, well, this would certainly make Mrs. Bone, you know, and, and, and he would use her as uh, every woman, I think, in the questions. But he referred to it once uh, after he asked some questions. Says, Cameron said, I do feel now that a very big part of my life is trying to give pleasure to Mrs. Bone. <laughs> I feel on this occasion I can only go so far. <laughs> I think Mr. Bone has a point. <laughs> I tried to look this up, so I googled Peter Bone's wife, and I didn't get anything done for the next two hours. No. <laughs> it does sound like a child's pornography book. Yeah. <laughs> See Peter's wife. Peter Bone's wife. He also said, there's a quote from Cameron, I'm aware women are not as supportive of the coalition as others. Now, who are these others? He means men! He can't even be bothered to call us people, can he? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, moving on, what did Cameron say in all these interviews that the British were very good at? Inventing. Inventing, yes. Yeah. Uh, a quote, an actual quote from us, we invented the jet engine DNA, the world wide <laughs> web. And you know, I don't know what we used to do before you invented DNA here. <laughs> what he doesn't realise is in Australia the DNA spirals the opposite direction. <laughs> You, but don't you just refer to it as and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's also worth remembering you can invent something and not be good at it. Do you know what I mean? Like Britain also invented rugby and cricket. Yes. Who did win the last two ashes? Please. We are not going to have any of that childish name calling from the straight Oh, if this was about the hurling, you'd be all over the shit. I, I was, <laughs> I was actually going to point out that I'd have been Australia, but you know what the hell. Uh, <laughs> Listen, we would just like to mention that I was out there for the cricket uh, <laughs> over the winter. Very enjoyable. And nothing better than hearing the Barmy Army sing to the Australian fans, send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over you. <laughs> and follow it up with your next queen is Camilla Parker Bowles. Camilla Parker Bowles. Camilla Parker Bowles. You very much brought that on yourself. Uh, <laughs> who might George Osborne have offended with during his speech? Uh, Eric Pickles. Eh? Eric Pickles, yes, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not a great photograph of Eric Pickles, but he's beginning to find a great time. photograph of Eric Pickles. <laughs> Pickles. He's a Dickensian. He's in, in every photo he feels more like, Good, good evening, Eric Pickles here. He's like, Welcome Christmas Day! Uh, you should be glad of it. Have some coal, that's all you're getting. Uh, you expect him to lift up the hat and a little ham sandwich to fall out of the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's odd, though. He's always referred to as Eric Pickles. He's never referred to as Mr. Pickles. And that is possibly because Mr. Pickles makes him sound like a cat. <laughs> has to back itself into a corner to clean itself. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on, please. Oh. Uh, what is happening to the traditional police station? What was announced this week? Uh, it's closing. 
Well, no, they're not. Well, they're not all closed. They're closed. Like there's one. There's yeah. one. There's one traditional police station. Yeah. And we've decided to close it. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was planned as if, as if they were getting rid of all the police. They're, they're getting rid of the public counter, the place you go to get your passport photograph signed, whatever it is. Yeah. Now you phone up uh, mm -hmm. and you use the automated phone system. No. Uh, oh, well, I don't know what I said. It's not like it's not like phoning for cinema tickets. It's not like they're going to go. Did you say London? Uh, <laughs> You're being stabbed. Press two. If, if, did you say there was a bugler in your house? <laughs> uh, no. no Bugler. If there is a bugler in your house, <laughs> tell him to stop bugling. Uh, bugling loudly in a house after 11 o'clock is an offence, and you may be arrested by the police. All right, send them! Uh, <laughs> the basic initiative with the police station is what they did with the post officers and just put them in branches of WH Smith. So you, the, the officer will say to you, thank you very much. I'm Jara Breen. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Adam Hills and Ed Byrne, Chris Addison, Hugh Dennis and Stuart Francis. Hello. We start with a round called Headliners. Here's a picture of the Prime Minister with two of his Cabinet colleagues. But what does C-A-F-S stand for? Is it uh, George Osborne's middle names, Crepuscular Addendum Fandango Sousaphone? <laughs> Is he couldn't arrange a fondle in a strip club? <laughs> Cocky, aristocratic, foppish and smug. <laughs> Could it be Charlie's Angels, the failed sequel? <laughs> is it cruising area for sex? <laughs> is it in fact, no. from left to right, clueless, Albino face, <laughs> slap it. <laughs> That's just abuse, by the way, you're applauding there. Yeah. That's not actual satire, that is just being rude about it. Yeah. Uh, is uh, Cameron simply saying, Crikey, a fox, splendid. <laughs> it's written all over the toilets here. Is it Chris Addison, fancy Stuart? <laughs> um, okay, okay, I'm going to move, to, move towards it, the correct answer, please. Okay, is it Cameron? Cameron Apologises for sexism. Yes, it is. Well done. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, the answer I was looking for is Cameron apologises for sexism. This is the news that Prime Minister David Cameron has apologised for a number of remarks he made in the House of Commons that were interpreted as being sexist. Speaking on the eve of the Conservative Party conference, he said he screwed up over his comments and must do better. The apology seems a way for Cameron to attempt to woo back female voters. Now, do we know what the, uh, what the instance were? Yes, yeah. what, what he did was he said apparently to one of the MPs in the House, he said, calm down, dear. Yes. Now, that is a sad thing when you've got to basically impersonate Michael Winner. <laughs> Meanwhile, George Osborne's behind him going, all we need to do is stimulate the European meerkat. <laughs> he said, he's, he's apologised for them, hasn't he? And he's actually said now to woo women voters that he doesn't regard women as beneath him. He doesn't want them to do uh, menial jobs like, you know, making tea, because he's got Nick Clegg to do that for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he apologised later in the interview with the Sunday Times, was, uh, by claiming that, and these are his exact words, I'm not that kind of, I'm not sort of one of the lads, actually, you know, most of my, I mean, one of my best friends. When I go out, it's like, no, I'm not explaining this properly. <laughs> Even the fact that one of his best friends may have been a woman until he actually tottered it up his head and went, no, I can't back that up. Uh, As the closest thing to a woman on this panel, Chris, is what Cameron said offensive? Yeah. Speaking for the sisterhood, Cameron talked about his problems with women to Andrew Marr. Now, there is a man... Yes. <laughs> A man who took out a super injunction to try and prevent people talking about the fact he was having a fling with a journalist. And you're thinking, if you're going to have an affair, don't have it with somebody who writes for a living. <laughs> have it with Wayne Rooney. He is next. <laughs> you think Rooney has days when he's got to write down his own name, he has to check the back of his shirt, <laughs> and even then he writes down ten. <laughs> yep. 
there was another, there was another comment that he made to the uh, MP Peter Bone, who has apparently tended to ask questions referring to his wife um, and saying, "Oh well, this would certainly make Mrs Bone, you know," and and, and he would use her as uh, every woman, I think, in the questions. But he referred to it once uh, after he asked some questions. Says Cameron said, "I do feel now that a very big part of my life is trying to give pleasure to Mrs Bone. I feel on this occasion I can only go so far." <laughs> Bone has a point. <laughs> I tried to look this up, so I googled Peter Bone's wife, and I didn't get anything done for the next two hours. No. <laughs> it does sound like a child's pornography book. Yeah. <laughs> see, see Peter's wife. Peter Bone's wife. He also said, there's a quote from Cameron, I'm aware women are not as supportive of the coalition as others. Now, who are these others? He needs men! He can't even be bothered to call us people, can he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, moving on, what did Cameron say in all these interviews that the British were very good at? Inventing. Inventing, yes. Yeah. Uh, a quote, an actual quote from him was, we invented the jet engine, DNA, the world wide <laughs> web. And you know, I don't know what we used to do before you invented DNA here. <laughs> what he doesn't realise is, in Australia, the DNA spirals the opposite direction. <laughs> But then don't you just refer to it as and? <laughs> yeah. It's also worth remembering you can invent something and not be good at it. Do you know what I mean? Like Britain also invented rugby and cricket. Yes. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Who, who did win the last two ashes? Yes. We are not going to have any of that childish name calling from the Australian. Oh, if this was about the hurling, you'd be all over the shit. I, I was, <laughs> I was actually going to point out that I'd have been Australia, but you know, what the hell. Uh, <laughs> I would just like to mention that I was out there for the cricket uh, <laughs> over the winter, very enjoyable. And nothing better than hearing the Barmy Army sing to the Australian fans, send her victorious, happy and glorious, long to reign over you. <laughs> and follow it up with your next queen is Camilla Parker Bowles. <laughs> Camilla Parker Bowles. You very much brought that on yourself. Uh, <laughs> who might George Osborne have offended with during his speech? Uh, Eric Pickles. Eric it? Pickles, yes, apparently. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, it's not a great photograph of Eric Pickles, but he's beginning to find a great time. photograph of Eric Pickles. <laughs> Oh, he's he's so Dickensian. He's in, in every photo he feels more like, Good, good evening, Eric Pickles here. You should work on Christmas Day. Uh, you should be glad of it. Mm -hmm. Have some coal, that's all you're getting. Uh, you expect him to lift up the hat and a little ham sandwich to fall out of the top. <laughs> He's always referred to as Eric Pickles. He's never referred to as Mr. Pickles. And that is possibly because Mr. Pickles makes him sound like a cat. <laughs> Being, uh, one of those overweight cats that has to back itself into a corner to clean itself. <laughs> moving on. Please, move on. Uh, what is happening to the traditional police station? What was announced this week? Uh, it's closing. Well, no, they're, no, not, they're not all closed. They're closing. Like there's one. There's yeah. one, there's yeah. one traditional police station, yeah. and we've decided to close it. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was kind of as if, as if they were getting rid of all the police. They're, they're getting rid of the public counter, the place you go to get your passport photograph signed, whatever it is. And now you phone up uh, mm -hmm. and you use the automated phone system. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know, Dwight, it's, it's, not like, it's not like phoning for cinema tickets. It's not like they're going to go, Did you say London? Uh, <laughs> You're being stabbed. Press two. If, if, did you say there was a bugler in your house? <laughs> uh, no, no, not a bugler. If there is a bugler in your house, tell him to stop bugling. Uh, bugling loudly in a house after 11 o'clock is an offence, and you may be arrested by the police. All right, send them! Uh, the basic initiative with the police station is what they did with the post office and just put them in the branches of WH Smith. So you, the, the officer will say to you, thank you very much for reporting this murder, Mum. Uh, just before you go, would you like a massive dairy milk for a quid? <laughs> The grey area between what is an emergency and what is not an emergency. Um, Are you going, ah, ah, an emergency? Yeah. No, not an emergency. Are, are you speaking really quietly because there's somebody in the house? Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm being attacked yeah. by the man from the Lurpak. <laughs> yeah, that would be really weird as the guy from the Lurpak motor attack, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I can hold him off as long as, until the heating kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but what I can think of going, uh, is this a non-emergency number? Yes, it's a, uh, there's been a burglary in my house. Oh, why is this not emergency? Ah, I shot him. So take your time. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going anywhere. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, give that line to Post and Ed Adam and Andy. Now we play a round called Thinking Outside the Mox. This <laughs> thing involves Stuart, Ed, and Adam. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the Queen of News and whoever it chooses to stop one of our performers will step forward and talk about that subject. The winner is whoever I think is the funniest. Okay, here we go. The first subject is... Kids. Who was coming in that? Last week. Ever. Sorted. Know about this now. Ah, yes, kid. Uh, I became a dad uh, uh, nine months ago. And uh, I haven't let it change my life completely. And that, well, the only thing I'm worried about, I don't want to be one of those people who prefaces a statement with the phrase... Speaking as a parent. <laughs> speaking as a parent. Gather round, everyone. He's speaking as a parent now. Bring, no, bring in the people from the other room. He's speaking as a parent. No, he was only speaking as an arsehole before. <laughs> now he's speaking as a parent. Yes, oh, sage one, speak. Tell us your wisdom. Impart your knowledge. Speaking as a parent. Doesn't that make you want to stab them as a maniac? Because <laughs> the thing is, you read the books. There's loads of books you can buy on uh, being a parent. That's why, uh, there's millions of books, in fact. That's why I get really annoyed when people use that excuse for, for, for their bad parenting. They always come, oh, well, you know, kids, they don't come with an instruction manual, do they? <laughs> no, 